Computer science is hard. It's the major with the highest dropout rate. You will fail and you will struggle. And there are millions of videos that'll tell you everything's gonna be amazing. You're gonna graduate, get a $200,000 offer, all these amazing perks like free food three times a day. But in this video, I wanna give you a major reality check. What you should actually expect in this major, some honest advice, and what you need to do to prepare right now. And honestly, as a person who went through a bachelor's and master's from Georgia Tech in computer science, these are some things I really wish I knew. First, classes and GPA are useless. Computer science degrees are broken. Because if you're like me and got into this major to land a high paying software engineering job, well, you're in for some disappointment. Computer science and software engineering are two peas in very different pods. And this is something I really regret not knowing earlier. I thought they were the exact same thing. That one leads into the other. You graduate from computer science and get into software engineering. But it turns out computer science is about understanding computing theory, math, and general problem solving behind the scenes of a computer. Software engineering is about building applications, web development, and real world systems. So actually putting the computer to use. For example, just because you understand how a compass works, how the magnetic pole works, the North Pole science, doesn't mean you're qualified to become a ship captain and sail the seas. So just because you major in computer science does not mean you're qualified to become a software engineer. That's why I say the system is broken and classes are useless because in computer science degrees, you learn too much computer science. You learn too much theory. And then upon graduation, you look for a software engineering job and you're like, hey, I know automata theory. I know De Morgan's law. Look at my degree. But no one cares. They don't care about your classes. They care what software do you know? What web apps have you built? Do you know React? Do you know TypeScript? Do you actually know software engineering, agile development? And specifically what really annoyed me about computer science was the fact that it was a glorified math degree. Some of my worst, most difficult classes were discrete math and applied combinatorics. You know those math problems that have more letters than numbers in them? How many permutations does the word Mississippi have? And I kid you not, once I finished my final exams in those classes, it was boom, vanished from memory. I was never asked about it again. I never had to apply my knowledge from those classes ever again. Even my GPA in those classes didn't even matter. When I was applying for software engineering jobs, out of the hundreds of interviews I've done, only one company ever asked for my transcript and all they wanted to see was that I had above a 3.0 GPA. So why was I working so hard? I don't know. And that's when I said enough was enough. I rolled up my sleeves and decided to go against the green. No more focusing on classes. Actually, no more focusing on most of my classes. There were still a few classes that were actually very valuable, but my main focus was I needed to learn how to ace the software engineering interview and get an internship. Because at the end of the day, once I graduate, my real world experience is the only thing that's gonna be going for me. Not my classes, not my GPA. But in terms of the few classes that actually did matter, here are my top three. One, object-oriented programming. This comes up a lot on interviews. So learn the four object-oriented principles. Inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and encapsulation. Two, data structures and algorithms. Learn all about sets, lists, maps, trees, graphs, big O notation, because these things directly show up on most tech interviews. CS VizTool was a tool that helped me out so, so much throughout this process. Three, systems and networks. This class was very important because this course material shows up a lot on advanced level interview questions. How does the internet actually work? Can you design a system architecture for Netflix or Spotify? A lot of those system design-like questions. I also specialized both my bachelor's and master's in computer science in AI, artificial intelligence, just so I can have some exposure because of the way the world is advancing. I took game AI and machine learning courses. So now when people talk about how amazing a technology like DeepSeek is because of reinforcement learning, I actually know what that means. And I encourage every single one of you to take at least one AI elective every semester. Your future self will thank you. So once I found out which classes actually mattered, I decided every other one wasn't even worth my stress. So much so during the summers, I took some of my super useless classes like differential equations or physics at a local community college and transferred that in and pair that with my AP coursework from high school, dual enrollments. I had about 62 credits that I brought into Georgia Tech, which allowed me to graduate with my bachelor's of computer science within two years at the age of 19 and additional one year after that with my master's at the age of 20. So at the age of 20, I had two computer science degrees and was earning over $200,000 per year because I decided to change my focus once I realized classes and GPA were useless. So now let's talk about how I actually ended up landing a job as a computer science major, something we all want, but no one clearly tells you how to do it. And we're gonna be going over my six step framework. One, mentally own it. I don't care if you're a freshman. I don't care if you have no experience. I don't care if you're an international student. I don't care if you've applied to 1000 companies and all 1000 rejected you. 
You always have a chance. You only need one company to say yes. I landed my first software engineering internship as a freshman at Amazon without prior experience. And a lot of people back then used to say, hey, you're a freshman. Don't worry about getting an internship. Don't bother applying. Or if a company rejected you, they'll be like, hey, don't worry. Maybe next year when you're a sophomore or a junior, you'll stand a chance. And at first they were right. I was getting rejected left and right, sometimes getting ghosted. But I had that serious fire in me that I was going to get an internship no matter what. It was mentally engraved. So I kept going at it. I applied anywhere and everywhere, getting rejected sometimes, learning from my failures. But through that, I was getting smarter because every failure was just practice until I eventually was successful. So mentally own it. Two, once we've established that we're going to fight for this position no matter what, we need to get our resume in shape. I have a free resume template down below if you want to check it out. But here are some quick fire tips. First, take out the start date of your university from your resume. It's not helping you out, especially if you're a freshman. It psychologically gives the idea that you're new. Instead, just put your expected graduation date. Second, take out any high school experience because you're not a baby. Third, use the X, Y, and Z format, which is accomplished X through Y that had Z impact when filling out the experience section of your resume. This is the format that Google recommends its engineers to use. Fourth, quantify your impact using numbers. I had a 92% accuracy on this project. My app had 10,000 downloads. Numbers draw eyeballs to your resume and it psychologically forces people to actually care about your experiences. Now I know what you're thinking. What do I do if I have no experience? Well, you know I got you. Three, gain free experience. You don't need to work for an official company to have experience on your resume. Projects, extracurriculars, and general activities can serve as experience. Take a weekend, watch a couple YouTube tutorials on Hugging Face, pick out a data set from Kaggle, take a look at a few GitHub repos and actually build something that you can show off to employers. If you don't want that, then find an extracurricular club on campus and build them a website or just help them some way technologically to show off your work, but do it for free because the goal is you want experience on your resume. Four, your network is your net worth. Get referrals. Millions of people want to get into the NBA, but Bronny James got in because his dad gave him a really strong referral to the Lakers. Particularly this year when people are mass applying everywhere, referrals are one of the few things that you can do to actually stand out. A cold application is a dead application. So I want you to reach out to people on LinkedIn who are at companies that you want to work for and ask them if they'd be down to refer you. More often than not, they actually want to because they also get a bonus if you get hired through their referral. Five, start early. There's no such thing as applying too early for an internship or job. And you'll be surprised, but a lot of the summer internships for summer 2026, they'll open up their positions May or June 2025, like a whole year in advance. And if you're one of the first ones who can jump on it, there's a good chance the recruiter will actually see your application and potentially give you a call back. But as time passes by, positions close up and the competition gets more fierce. Six, the most important one is subscribe to my YouTube channel because I provide you a lot of free content on how to break into tech. Plus, I've already created two whole videos on getting a software engineering job and internship. So if this is up your alley, you know what to do. Now, it would have been a complete disgrace if I made a whole video on computer science if I didn't talk about AI because AI is changing up this major so, so much. Back in 2021, it was impressive if you did anything AI related. I remember my first time using GitHub Copilot. I would write a comment at the top of a function and it would code it out for me. And I was like, whoa, that was like mind boggling back then. And then I took this course called Game AI, which gave me more exposure on how to fight enemies using AI. And that was also really impressive. But now in 2025, AI is a big beast. You can develop complete coding projects with one prompt using AI. You can have AI, take your notes, summarize them, and then create a mini podcast to teach you. AI can apply for jobs for you. And sometimes, and you didn't hear this from me, it can attend the interviews for you. And now because of its power, a lot of people are very worried about AI potentially taking your job and C-level executives at top tech companies saying that they're going to stop hiring engineers or their AI is good enough to act as a mid-level software engineer, such as at Meta. And the number one question I get asked nowadays, especially on Instagram, is AI going to replace software engineers? Are we cooked. And my response is that for AI to completely take over software engineering and replace that whole industry, that is going to take a really, really long time. Software engineers get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, so they can't just replace a trillion dollar industry overnight, but it's slowly getting there. The one thing that you and I can do right now is keep learning about AI, keep grinding and keep practicing. Knowledge will always be the solution. So I recommend that you take some gen AI courses that you learn about how to integrate AI into your workflows, about all the various different tools of how these models actually work behind the scenes. Particularly, Andrew from Coursera has really good AI courses. And in fact, I attended an event in New York City in 
which I learned about the art of AI prompting because that is frankly an up and coming career. And no, it's not as simple as ChatGPT doing your computer science homework. Prompting and learning how to effectively prompt and getting exactly what you need from AI models, that is a career that is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. So potentially learn about it. We can in fact create custom models and have them solve specific use cases. For example, if there's a local business that deals with revenue issues, maybe you can create an AI model that can take in various parameters of their business and help them identify a proper marketing strategy. And once you're able to solve one problem with AI, chances are there's a bunch of other businesses or people that have similar problems so you can scale up and through that earn a lot of money. There has never been a better time to get into computer science than right now because of the vast opportunities with AI. So the future is very bright for you guys and I hope you're ready for it. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're interested in my absolutely free tech newsletter, link will be down below in the description. And if you wanna know what software engineers actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might wanna watch this video right here.